Hello and welcome back to Bookish Brits. My name is Michelle and we're here today with a special guest, Zoe Marriott, the UK YA author of The Swan Kingdom, Daughter of the Flames, Frostfire, Shadows on the Moon, and the new, oh god. Name of the Blade Name series. of the, the new, Name of the Blade I series. Get too. Which, <laughs> too many books. Which starts with The Night Itself and Darkness Hidden. Hello and Hello. welcome. Alright, for anyone who hasn't read the Name of the Blade series, mm -hmm. how would you sort of describe it? It's funny, dark, urban fantasy with a contemporary London setting mm. and uh, basically for people who like urban fantasy but maybe have read quite a lot and are a bit sick now of seeing angels, werewolves, vampires, fairies and all the white people, you know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> so yes, yes. diverse cast. Uh, of like that looks like hopefully like you know sort of people that you would see walking down an actual London street and diverse kind of sexual identities and different monsters Japanese monsters which are extra creepy because most of them you've never heard of and yes. you're like what the and it's like no seriously I didn't make it up that's actually real Japanese mythology <laughs> they have nine tails it's freaky there you go fantastic that actually led me on to my second question I love the covers of your books mm -hmm. with actual Japanese people on the front cover yeah. um, and I was going to ask what having a diverse cast of characters means to you in, in your books. It's kind of, it's weird now actually because when I wrote my first book which was The Swan Kingdom um, it didn't really even occur to me to, people, I mean a lot of writers will say oh my characters just come to me and it's true they do mm. but if you never think about diversity the characters that just come to you will be exactly the same as you yeah and that's just the way that it works and so i think what, what happened is that i between finishing the swan kingdom and writing daughter of the flames which is my first properly diverse book mm. i reread um diana Wynne jones's the tough guide to fantasy land and she has like an entry in the about something called colour coding, which is where you can tell the villain because he will have black hair. And if someone comes and they have golden hair and blue eyes, they're probably going to be the hero. And I just remember getting <laughs> really cross about it, like, what? I, 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 because as a white person, I had not noticed. Yes. Which is ridiculous because I actually grew up in a mixed race family mm. and there's a lot of racism around and I should really have been more aware of it. And I felt like I'd kind of really let my sister down um, and you know, done, done something a bit. I mean, I love that book, The Swan Kingdom, it's my first book, but I do look at it and think, oh, there were so many opportunities that I, I wasted. And once I'd opened my mind up, it's amazing how the characters that just come to you are so much more interesting, you know, like, oh, well, well you know, this person can have a disability, or this person can be gay, or this person can have a completely different nationality, and all the ways that that will expand their stories and their roles and make them different and interesting and unusual. And your writing just naturally becomes better, in my opinion. So basically, to me, the characters that just come to me now are diverse. Mm -hmm. I don't, I, no, no cast presents itself to me that's all white, straight, able-bodied, and I think that's great. I do <laughs> I, as well. I feel, I feel quite proud that my brain is open to that extent. Yes. And I want to write more stories, I want to write more disabled characters, because... <clears throat> So far, the response to the one disabled hero that I provided really peed me off. <laughs> People said that I had emasculated him by making him disabled. So I really want to put more disabled characters in there so I can be like, oh, you don't like them, what's tough? Because they are, <laughs> and they're going to stay. So, and that, and, you know, but the thing is, the more you open your mind to diversity, the more different kinds of characters you want to write about because they're awesome. So, lots more in the future, hopefully. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> well, you mentioned Diana <clears throat> Wynne-Jones there, and I just wanted to ask, um, who do you think that is writing now, fantasy or British authors, are getting it really, really right? Oh my god, completely on the Sorry. spot! No, um, well, I'm, I mean, the thing is, not British, it's not British, but yeah. to more appear. Mm. Another reason that I feel, kind of feel ashamed that I, it took me a full book to, to kind of really kind of click to realise that books needed to be diverse, should be diverse, are better if they're diverse. Because her books are so diverse. Mm. And, you know, they have, like, she just kind of produces a fully realised galaxy of cultures and you know, religions and skin colours and different kind of castes within different communities and and also you know she has uh, gay characters and transgender characters and her books are just fantastic. If you want a crash course on how to write a really great diverse fantasy with fantastic feminist characters as well, that Tamora Pierce is the one you want to go to. Um, <clears throat> James Dawson mm. is everyone's go-to guy because he's the queen of teen and we love him. <laughs> 
Um, his books are fantastic, obviously. Yeah. Um, he just naturally includes diversity as well. Very, very aware of, you know, um, of what life is like in, in Britain mm. today for people. Um, other British writers that I love. Uh, Liz Yeager's books are great. She's actually a personal friend of mine, so I have to say that. Um, and, I, and I'm st kind of stumped because I know that there's a whole <laughs> list, but my brain has gone blank now. And the only ones that want to pop into my head are the ones that I've seen on the way in through Walker Books, so it's like kind of an advert. So I'll just stop before it seems like I'm just going, these are all the Walker authors that you should buy. But yes, lots of, there are lots of British. I, think, I do think British authors do a really good job of it. Um, I think there are some American authors that do a very good job of it, but not as many. I think in America, to be commercial, generally, you need to be writing a mainly white cast. Mm. And if you include diverse characters, they will be diverse in a certain way. So you can yeah. glee, your glee cast, you know, your kind mm. of studious Asian female character and your kind of sassy black friend and that sort of thing. And you know, so they may be there, but they're not necessarily breaking out of stereotypes in the way that you would hope. Yeah. Um, you know, someone told me off because uh, the night itself <clears throat> wasn't diverse enough for them. They, they thought that, you know, well, why is Jack a best friend instead of being the main character? And the thing is, okay. what, yeah, the thing is, it's like you get to a certain point and you feel like you've stuffed about as so much diversity in there as you can. You know, the whole cast of the night itself and all those books is people of colour. Exactly. And there's a gender fluid character and a bisexual character and a lesbian character. And they all get to have point of, points of view in the story. Um, but at the same time, it stuck a little bit as well. And I, so I, would, I really would like to write a main character who is gay. I did try, but yeah, unfortunately, did, yeah. I did try, but the book did not get published. So, uh -uh. <laughs> we'll be trying again soon. We'll see. Now, you have written a sequel with um, Frostfire and Daughter of the Flames. Mm -hmm. but this one, it's being published sort of back to back in the, the name of the Blades. Yeah. How is that different? <laughs> um, I, I, all the way through writing it, I was saying to my agent and my, and my editor, don't let me do this again. Do, if I say that I'm going to write trilogy again, actually hit me with something. <laughs> don't let me do it. Because I, my, my big weakness as a writer is plotting. Mm. I, I enjoy lots of things, you know, and they, they come naturally to me, like dialogue and descriptions and characterisation. That's the fun yeah. for me. People think that I must be really good at plotting because, like, I have written six million posts about plotting on my blog and it's like, no, I write them because otherwise I can't figure out what I'm doing. I'm terrible at it. And generally what happens is that I'll come up with a really like dynamic plot and then I'll put the characters in a room together and they'll start talking to each other and they'll just work it out. <laughs> They're talking and it's like, oh no, they have nothing to do for the next four chapters. Well, I guess I'd better throw a dragon in there. That'll work. <laughs> Um, so it's terrible, and especially because I usually rely on going back to the beginning to retrofit yeah. the beginning to match the end. Because my characters just run away with me all the time. And you can't do that when the first part's been published. So it's been so tough, and my editor has had to be so hard on me, like, get back on track, stop going off on tangents. You can't do that if it's a trilogy. So I'm not going to write any more trilogies in the foreseeable future. I'm hopefully going to write some books that are linked and have shared settings and things, but it's been a nightmare. I've loved it, but it's been a nightmare, and I will not be doing it again in the near future. No. <laughs> oh, honestly, I'm still traumatized. <laughs> no. All right, I do. I love reading your blog and your Twitter you. feed, and what I love so much about it is it's quite varied um, mm -hmm. in your interests, and I wanted to know what are you obsessed with right now not in terms of books or anything but tv <laughs> so music, many things um, um elementary um, for a start okay which is the american version of sherlock um and i heard about it and it was like they're taking our sherlock they're taking our sherlock and they're putting him in new york <laughs> oh no they didn't how dare how dare they change joan watson john watson to to Joe Watson, how how dare they? Oh my god! And then I watched a couple of episodes on TV, and I was like, it's the best thing. <laughs> Why did you think of this before? Oh my god! Watson should always have been a girl. It's fantastic, and I love it. And I yes. marathoned the whole first season, and then bought the second season box set, and like, and I'm now freaking out because the end of the series was so intense. Oh my god! Um, so that, but also as most people who follow me on Twitter now, I'm also a huge Marvel fan girl, so I'm constantly. Uh, reading Marvel fanfic and, uh, and was currently freaking out about the Age of Ultron trailer like yes. watched it six times and was like please tell me they're gonna be okay <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> because Cap Shield is broken oh my yes. god yeah like all the Why? geeky things what's gonna happen what's and then gonna like happen? went online and tried to like make myself feel better by buying a Tony bobblehead you know, <laughs> couldn't get it 
<laughs> if anyone knows where you can get one for an affordable price, that would be great. Because <laughs> I, I have the bookie, but I can't get I can't get a, a classic cap. I can get like uh, you know winter soldier cap, which is mm. which is great, but I want the classic cap. Yeah, this is straight into <laughs> extremely geeky territory with that. Yeah, and also and then food. You said so mostly food. I'm a huge foodie and I love to cook. I don't want to put cooking things on my blog because. I, I, I do talk about a variety of things yeah. because I think you need to be real online and I don't think you need to have a profile or or a, what, what do they call it? Uh, a platform. What is that? If everyone has a platform, <laughs> yes. if everyone has a platform, then we're all at the same height. What's the point? So, uh, yeah, I just, I'm me, but I don't generally post cooking things online because uh, I think generally for my readers, like the younger readers, they're not that interested because their mum's doing it. Or the dad, <laughs> not to be sexist. Um, I did post a, a recipe for a crumble once, uh, which was surprisingly popular. But anyway, food, Japanese food, I'm really obsessed with because I live in the north of the country and you can't get it. You can't get it for love or money. Um, every time that Marks and Spencer brings out like a line of new Asian food, I'm getting really <laughs> excited. I go check it out and then it's rubbish. Oh, and I'm like, no. no, you call those gyoza. How can you get that? I don't even believe it. So whenever I come to London, it's usually a question to like try and find as many places that sell noodles and sushi and stuff and just like cram in as much <laughs> as I can. I can't, I've, tr I've tried to cook my own. It's yeah. an, um, I'm a decent cook, but I, I don't seem to have the skills to make sushi or those sorts of things. It's just, it's just turn off. So yes, that's what I'm obsessed with. And if anyone would like to open a really great sushi place in Grimsby, <laughs> uh, that would be great. I would be a customer. I don't know if anyone else in the town would eat raw fish because they'd all be like, Raw fish? What's wrong with you? But I would be a customer probably like five times a week, so you probably have enough business just from me to keep yourself going because I, I don't have a small appetite. <laughs> just, just in case you thought <laughs> that I might be like, you know, four bits of sushi and done. Bring, no. me, bring me the family platter. <laughs> I will finish that. I'm quite happy with it. And finally, mm -hmm. we're at a blogger tea. Is there anything that you would like to say to... Bloggers in general, especially after the I'm horrible alarmed. drama. I knew you were going there! I knew you were going there! I'm so scared! I just want to say that I love you. I love you all. I think that Catherine Hale's a... I, no, I don't want to say anything nasty, but I think Catherine Hale... I think, uh, honestly, from one author to another, I think that the lady is unstable and needs help. I think The Guardian were way out of line publishing that without even fact-checking. Yes. I think the victim blaming that has been going on online about the blogger who was targeted is crazy. And uh, I, I, won't, I promise I will never stalk any of you. <laughs> you, can, you can give me bad reviews all you like. I will not hold it against anyone because I know that I have written critical reviews of things. Mm. And critical th reviews can sell books. I have bought books because of critical I reviews. Have as well. Because yes. what annoys one person can be someone else's bulletproof kink. Yes. So go for it. You are safe from being stalked by me. Say what you want. Wow, I could say so much stuff, but I don't want. I don't want to be. I don't want to be like. Ah. So I'm yes, just going to shut up. Sure. Just let's not. Let's yeah, stop the madness. Is what I'm saying. Stop the madness. Great. Well, thank you very much. I think we're going to turn this off and go and eat cake. Okay. <laughs> Thank I you so much. I think I've been off camera for most of this because I think I was just sort of sat here like this. So <laughs> if my half of my face was missing, I'm really sorry. Editing. <laughs> I used to, when I was making vlogs, I used to kind of, I'd spend, maybe spend like 20 minutes at the camera and then the whole day would be editing to try and make it look like I was a sane person and not just a person just going, at the camera. <laughs> Terrible. Ugh. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. You made that quite yes. enjoyable. Well, not too bad. <laughs> Thank you.